Most Christians believe that God is on a desperate soul-saving crusade, fighting the devil to rescue mankind from eternal hellfire. But your Bible says that God hides himself. Discover the shocking reason why God hides himself from most people today and why he won't hide himself for much longer. Next, on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. Did you ever wonder why God hides himself? Well, if you look at everything in this world, God is certainly a mystery to mankind overall, and it, it certainly uh, does not know who and what God is. And so it's, it's just a big mystery. Where do you find true happiness in this world? Certainly only God knows, and we do all want a wonderful life. But why does God hide Himself? Does that seem practical to you? Notice Psalm 104 and verse 29. Here's what it says. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. Now that's, that's sad. That's discouraging when you read a scripture like that, where it says God's hiding His face and the people are troubled and God takes away their breath and they, they die. That's horrifying. When you really look at it spiritually, it is horrifying. God created us, and He can give us a joyous, happy life, and nobody else can, and God always will if we will seek Him first, and then all the other things will be added. Notice Isaiah 45 and verse 15. Truly you are a God who hides Himself, O God of Israel, the Savior. Well, truly, you're God who hides Himself. Why does God do that? Can he, how can He help us that way? But it's going to say, O God of Israel, the Savior. You're a God who hides Himself, and yet goes on to say that He is a God, our Savior. In spite of the fact that He hides Himself, it is a part of His whole plan. This is God's master plan to be hiding Himself today, but He isn't going to be hiding Himself very long. He prophesies now that it's just in a short little time Jesus Christ is going to return to this earth, and He will no longer hide Himself from man. God won't. Jesus Christ won't. And then later He'll show you how God is going to come to this earth. So God has a plan for saving Israel, and everybody's going to become Israel, just as God's church is today. Gentiles and Israelites, everybody is, becomes spiritual Israel. But notice verse 17, But Israel shall be saved in the eternal with an everlasting salvation. There is going to be salvation, but we have to understand why God is doing this and what is His reason behind it. Why is God hiding Himself? Well, for example, if you were to look at Lucifer's life, he was sent here to this earth to establish God's government, and he had one-third of the angels with him. And uh, they were ruling this earth, and they established God's government on this earth. But then Lucifer turned away from God and, and uh, deceived all of the angels, one third of the angels that were with him. And God knew at that time that he had to recreate himself and man because the angels could not beautify the whole universe and build it the way God wanted them to. That was God's plan for them, and that's why the government had to be there. So if you look at Colossians 1 and verse 27, it talks about Christ being in us, the hope of glory. Philippians 2 and verse 5 talks about God's mind being in us. And of course, what God was trying to do with the tree of life was 
give Adam and Eve the mind of God. But they listened to Satan the devil and took on the mind of the devil. And the world has been that way ever since. Because Adam, well, he, God let him lead the whole family of man, and that's the way He led them. If you, you can look at Ephesians 2 and verse 2 where it talks about the prince of the power of the air. Satan has power in this world. He rules this world, and he's ruled it ever since Adam and Eve, all that time. Now, you can see in 1 Timothy 2, verses 13 and 14, that uh, Eve was deceived, but Adam was not deceived. But he just went right along with Eve and willfully sinned against God. What God had explicitly explained to him, he turned away from God. He refused to take the tree of life, and he took the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and Satan began to work on his mind and began to be his God. This world, ever since that, has been held captive by Satan the devil, ever since the time of Adam and Eve. Now, how many people really believe that, and yet it's really clear in your Bible? And Mr. Armstrong's book on Mystery of the Ages explains that to us very well. Notice Genesis 3 and verse 22. Adam had a chance to replace Satan on his throne, but he didn't do it. And notice what it says here in the third chapter of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible. And the eternal God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the eternal God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden carabims, and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So God sent them out of the Garden of Eden. Now, they just decided that they would determine what's good and what's evil, and that's what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is all about. They would decide if this is good or that's good, not God. That's what it, this is all about. They decided for themselves, and uh, that the best you can get of that is self-righteousness, which God says is as filthy rags. It's worthless. And God has strong words to say about that. Notice what Mr. Armstrong wrote about this in Mystery of the Ages. The glorious archangel Lucifer, as God originally created him, was the pinnacle of God's creative power in a single being. Few today remotely realize the great power now turned to cunning deception possessed by Satan. Apparently, Adam completely underestimated him. People today underestimate Satan all the time. He has all his power. Ninety-five percent of God's own church have been turned away from God in this end time, in this Laodicean era. That's what your Bible teaches you. Satan was an angel of light at one time. He was a light bringer. Now he just comes as an angel of light, but he's an evil deceiver that causes this world to worship him. So you can see the power that he has, but people keep underestimating that. When God drove the man out of the Garden of Eden and just barred them from re-entrance, He just cut them off for 6,000 years. Now, didn't, now he still has his master plan of 7,000 years, but He cut them off for 6,000 years except for an exceedingly few who, whom God would call out and do His work, the prophets of old, and then later on the church. And God began to call out groups of people after Jesus Christ established His church, and He said it would never die. Matthew 16 and verse 18, 
But Mr. Armstrong said at the end of his life, it was very short, or a very short time until his death, that he finally realized how totally God has cut man off from God in this world. Men don't understand that, but that's exactly what these scriptures are talking about. Exceedingly few have been called out of this world and given God's true truth, and what do they do? Well, they're uh, to uh, restore the government of God on this earth in the church, not in the world. And yet, God later, or Christ is going to come and restore it all to the earth. But right now, the church restores the uh, government of God in the church, and then they, ha they uh, have to establish God's character, and they need that kind of character to be able to help Christ rule in the world tomorrow, because the, the next thing to do is to establish the kingdom of God and to finish the whole universe, which is what Lucifer was going to do. He and all the angels were going to beautify and rebuild or build a lot more on the universe, in the universe. Now that, that is God's plan, and he's, he's working that out. It's all working out very, very well. But you see, Adam and Eve, they refused to change, and God just drove them out. And if people decide in the end they're going to, not going to change, then God's going to blot them out of the book of life. But here, today, He's reproducing Himself in His first fruits, those called out before the second coming of Christ, and who are doing God's work and getting His message out there to this world. That is, I mean, that is an extreme ultimate to, for God to recreate Himself in man. That is something that really ought to stagger the human mind. Now, there were two very symbolic trees in, uh, in the Garden of Eden, and just how significant were they? Well, how significant were they? The real significance of those two symbolic trees explains the very foundation of this world. It explains the foundation of this very world. It's always been a mystery to man. Well, uh, uh, what are those two trees all about? And they look on it and often scoff and explain it as being kind of a childish approach to explaining the Bible. But it's so profound, almost nobody understands it. It is the very depth of God. Think about this. That what you see there is the foundation of the world, this world we see right now. What happened to Adam and Eve is happening to the whole world all the way down to the second coming of Christ. He gave man 6,000 years to go ahead and, all right, you work it out yourself, and let's see what you do and how you conduct things and how you handle yourself eating from the wrong tree, which is really the tree of death. It's about death, eternal death, if we don't learn some lessons. So that's something that we ought to uh, really be aware of in this evil, pulsating, twisted world today. But it's, this is like a movie, as I've said so often. If you go into the movie and it's a fourth or a third gone, and you watch it, well, you're confused about what's going on. Of course you are. And if you have a wrong premise, you're going to have a wrong outcome every time. That's the way it is. And people will kind of laugh and scoff about Adam and Eve and what they did uh, with the two trees. It seems rather childish to them, but it, its significance is, is so profound that most people can't even get it. They can't even begin to understand what it's all about. But it's about the foundation of this world and how this world became the way it is right now. 
We all need to know that. I'm telling you, there's, there's just nothing really to, to compare with that. You have to go back to the origin to really understand this world. You're, you, you can't come in at the, when the movie's about over, especially today, and expect to understand it. It's an, impossible, uh, an impossibility to even do that. So God showed it from the very beginning that there would be no peace in this world. You remember how Cain killed Abel? From the very beginning! And here today we have a violent world. There's no peace. There was no peace in Adam's family. There's no peace in the world today. And from Adam all the way down to the Second Coming of Christ, nobody's ever going to have peace on this earth until Christ gets here. And there's going to be a quite a lot of suffering before that happens and before we learn a few lessons. But can you imagine the first family of man who were actually taught by God Himself? He didn't hide His face from them. He taught them how to live, how to live and have a joyful, happy, abundant life, prosperous life. And over time He sent prophets to them after they rebelled, and they would oftentimes kill those prophets, kill them! because they loved worshiping Satan the devil. They fell in love with this Satan's world. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, He's the God of this world, and He has taken this world captive all the way from Adam down to the Second Coming, Second Coming of Christ. How terrible it is that the world doesn't understand what I'm talking to you about. Here we have, man has 6,000 years of frustration, defeat, and death, and all kinds of horrible problems, and they trust in themselves. They're self reliant, they're self willed. And Jesus Christ said He was sent to this earth to, and, and to teach the will of His Father, and keep the will of His Father, and finish His work. That's not what men do today. It simply is not what they do. God closed off the tree of life to Adam and Eve, and chose those prophets to try to help them, and yet He wasn't able to do that. And the whole world since has been very much deceived. If you look at Hebrews 9 and verse 27, God says, look, it is for all human beings to live and die once, <laughs> and then there's a resurrection. This is the hope of man. All mankind has been deceived except a tiny few for those 6,000 years, but they were not being judged. They didn't know God. They turned away from God. They sinned from God. And what does that cause God to do? It causes Him to hide Himself. From us. That's what it does. The second Adam is Jesus Christ, and He has already set things straight and showed us how to do this, and He's qualified to replace Satan on His throne and is about to do it, and I mean a tiny few years. But today, this world is ruled by Satan the devil, an invisible Satan the devil. Notice Isaiah 59 in verse 1. Behold, the Eternal's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. See, sin causes God to just turn his face from man. And they don't, this world doesn't want God, and they don't seek God. They think they do, but they don't really. And they don't understand God, and all of this is just a mystery that we really, really need to understand. But when Jesus Christ comes back to this earth, He is going to reveal the Father. 
John 1 and verse 18 says, He came to this earth to do what? To declare the Father. You know why? Well, because all throughout what we call the Old Testament, well, nobody knew the Father. Nobody understood what about the Father. What, what about the Father? And some, some people think, well, there was only one God. No, there's, there are two gods. John 1 and, and verse 1 tells you that God and the Word, the spokesman for the family, two gods that use the Holy Spirit of God to build character in God's people. Adam, uh, again, was uh, choosing to take of the forbidden tree, and it just cut him and his family off. The family of man cut them off from God, cut them off because of their sins, and the individuals since that time and the families have sinned against God and followed their father Adam, and they pay a dear price for that. So God closed off the tree of life. He just shut it down. Nobody has access to it except those exceedingly small, that small little flock that God calls first fruits so that they can get prepared to rule with Christ on David's throne and help teach the world about the Father and His family that the world does not even know. They don't know anything about the Father, but when, when uh, you uh, receive the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ reconciles you to your Father and the family of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Luke 1, verses 30-33. The Father gave Jesus Christ His throne of David, which is really the throne of Christ. And today there's a new throne that you ought to understand and why that's true. And it's one of the most powerful little books that I have written. God came to reveal the Father because this is all about family. God is a family. Even in Genesis 1 and verse 1, when it says, talks about God, it's talking about Elohim, who, which is a plural word, like company or group or a family. It's a family. Elohim, that's what that word really, really means. And the only hope that God gives us is if we don't know God or haven't received the Holy Spirit of God, is to realize we're going to be resurrected from the dead. God is going to give them a chance to know God. They didn't know God in this world, and they're going to be judged when they're resurrected. Everybody has to be judged and learn God's way of life and then inherit the great, vast universe and then rule over it and build it and beautify it. That's what God wants us to do. In Ezekiel 39 and 28 and 29, I'll just paraphrase it, God says He's going to gather them and bring them into their own land and, and have left none of them anymore, neither will I hide my face anymore from them. I have poured out my Spirit upon them. He's going to give the Spirit to everybody on earth, and then there, that's going to be tied to the uh, spirit of man, and then man will have the very mind of God and will give himself to this, and God will see to it that all of them inherit the whole universe. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Request The Incredible Human Potential, Mystery of the Two Trees, and A World in Captivity. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.